Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and in this video we are going to look inside Unreal Engine. So firstly what we need to do is of course launch Unreal Engine. So what you gotta do is in your Epic Games Launcher you gotta go to Library and launch the Unreal Engine from here. You can also create a shortcut to Unreal Engine if you want to. And let it load up. And this is the Unreal Project Browser. This is not the Unreal Editor. So here what you do is manage your all the projects here. You get a list of all of your projects and you just open them up as per your desire. You can also see more projects. Yeah, that's a lot of projects. So what you need to do now is create a new project because we are starting out. We don't have a project. So we need to create a new project. So to create a new project, we need to select one of these four categories. The first category means games. We need uh, this category to develop games. So it um, contains the key classes, levels and examples uh, for a game. Film, te television and live events. So this is really important because um, I mean, many people create films in Unreal Engine. So this, this category is really important. Architecture, engineering, construction. So you might have heard of AutoCAD. You you create architecture and uh, architecture scenes there. So you can render it in Unreal Engine. Uh, you can import it using DataSmith, and you can render it in Unreal Engine. And that's what architecture, engineering, construction is used for. And correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not really um, considering about these two templates right now because I actually don't know about these templates too much in depth. But uh, in this whole channel, we are going to talk about these two and a bit on these two as well. So for now, let's start from a games template. Now we're going to select a template. So there are a lot of templates here. First person flying, puzzle and rolling, third person top down. I mean, a lot of, you know, vehicle advanced, vehicle virtual reality, a lot of, and of course the blank template. So. In this series, we're going to use the first person template, the third person template, and the vehicle advanced template. For now, let's use the first person template which, because it comes with a character. You can shoot around and you know, do stuff. Then you click on the next button here. And here you just specify some project settings. Firstly, you specify it's a blueprint project or it's a C++ project. Now you may have heard of C++ and of course some of you may have also heard about Blueprints but uh, many of you may have not have heard about Blueprints so what you need to understand now is just Blueprints is just a visual way of writing C++ inside of Unreal Engine and sometimes it's very necessary in some case scenarios so yeah you can use a Blueprint on C++ and if you're just starting out with Unreal Engine definitely, definitely recommend Blueprints Okay, now we need to select the quality here. So for now, let's leave it to maximum quality. You can also make it scalable 3D or 2D. And this is actually really important for mobile devices, which cannot support a, you know, just graphical interfaces. Not graphical interfaces, but a high amount of graphical stuff. And here we actually specify we want to develop this a game or project for a mobile device or a desktop or a console. So desktop console are high-end devices and mobile tablets are low-end devices. So for now we are using a desktop so we are just going to use a desktop in here. And now we have this option to include starter content and to not include starter content. So what exactly is starter content? Starter content comes with um, you know a lot of assets such as particle systems and a lot of meshes a lot of materials a heck a lot of materials I should say and textures as well it comes with a lot more things than you think so if you're a beginner and you're just starting out definitely recommend start a content and if you're a pro you just have all the assets needed then it's good to keep your project clean and not include start a content you can definitely add starter content later on. Then we need to give the location for your project and the name for our project. This is pretty straightforward, self-explanatory things. 
but for the folder I have did my e drive inside the Android projects folder and for the name of the project I'm going to give it UE beginner series for now you can just give it anything you want but project names in Unreal Engine have a lot of limitation they cannot be larger than 20 characters as you can see here and another limitation is they cannot have spaces for example you just want to clarify something like this you just cannot do it you need to have zero spaces you can have underscore though so I like underscore so let's create the project then. And if you select the C++ project at this point, then it may take a bit more time to compile everything. Okay, so here we are inside the Unreal Engine. I know it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of mess, but we will cover about each and every element of this uh, interface right now. So the first and the most important um, part of the viewport, uh, part of the Unreal Engine editor is the viewport. And this is a very important part, okay? This is one of the most important parts in the Unreal Editor window. And what it allows you to do is basically see that how your level will look. It will also allow you to see all of the actors which are placed in your in your world. Um, and by actor, I mean all kinds of actors such as skeletal meshes, static meshes, such as this. This is a static mesh. Static mesh actor, you can see here. And of course, you can also have volumes and a lot of other things such as text and player start, of course, and your character. So this is the viewport. So we are going to see about the viewport a lot. But for now, what you need to understand is a viewport allows you to see what's going on. And it just allows you to look at how your game or your project is going to look and feel like. And you, for some reason, if you are not satisfied with a single viewport, you can definitely uh, uh, add more viewports up to a maximum level of four viewports. So you can add more viewports. Viewport one, viewport two. If you want to look at a different angle, you can definitely do that. Okay, so for now, let's close it. Okay, another important part of the Unreal interface is the world outline. And this is a very important part as well. So what the world outliner or simply we can say as outliner, it allows you to do is you can um, manage your, all of the assets, all of the um, meshes, all of the actors in your scene in a place. Um, you can just organize them. You can see them. You can search for them. For example, I can search for the light source here. Yeah, there's the light source. And you can select that, just edit the properties. So it's really easy. Instead of just going to the viewport and just, you know, where's the light source? Where's the light source? Searching for it. Yeah, here's the light source. Now I can edit the details. Instead of doing all of that work, you can just go in the board outliner, just select your stuff and edit it. Okay, so um, you can also search for it, uh, as I've said earlier. So it's a really useful tool, the word outliner. And of course, you can add more word outliners as well. But I'm not really sure about word outliners. They can be added or not. I don't think so, really. They can be added. And also, another important part is the details panel. The details panel is a very important part and a very essential uh, thing in Unreal Engine. And without a details panel, you just cannot edit anything, anything here. So yeah all of the properties will lie on the uh, details panel for example let's actually direct, uh, select our directional light here the light source and okay we have a lot of settings here okay what is this this is a lot of mess this, there's a lot of numbers okay what do i do what do i do <laughs> okay 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 let's stop joking now so uh, these numbers can be edited to really match your requirements so yeah we can at these numbers match your requirements. You can also change the mobility to movable. You can make it dynamic lighting. But let's do it now, actually. It's really cool. Okay, so 
as you have covered the details panel now, we also can cover the wall settings now. So the wall settings contain the settings for the particular map you are using. And you can see there are a lot of sections in here, such as physics, you can override the world gravity. Of course, but the important part here is the game mode. The game mode is a very important part of the world settings. You can also uh, change default game mode in the project settings. But for now, let's look at this. So you can select any of the game modes. We will also create a custom game mode. Uh, but this is a very important part. Just remember, remember this thing. We can also select uh, the different actors for uh, assigned to these things here. Uh, such as the default pawn class, you can select the default pawn class, uh, for example, the spectator pawn. And if we just click on this here, and disable the auto closes player, we can see that we are now a spectator pawn. Cool, we are now a spectator pawn, really good, really great. Okay, let's actually do it back to normal. Uh, so, expected normal first person cat. All right, so that's how you can change these. We are going to go in depth about these as well. And the uh, the important ones here are actually default default pawn class and player controller class, and also the herd class. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is the content browser. So. For example, you have the FBX file. FBX means a model file, and you just want to use it in your scene. You can import it into the content browser. You can just create folders here, import it there, and you know just use it in your scene. Other things you can make in the content browser are assets such as blueprint class, a level, material particle systems, cascade particle system actually. Um, some animation assets, there's a lot of animation assets actually. AI assets, blendables, blueprints, actually a lot of stuff, user interface. So that's the content browser. It contains your assets um, or you can say content. In another words, you can say the content browser as a file explorer for Unreal Engine. That's it is, that's all it is, as simple as that. Now, uh, let's also talk about the place actors here. So uh, the place actors panel actually lets you to place some actors in your scene. In the all classes you can see all other actors that can be placed in your scene. Oh, that's really cool. For example, I bring in a sphere, okay. Uh, okay, that's a sphere. Bring it up. There's a sphere in your scene. Cool. I'll delete that one. Huh? So you can just drag anything like a plane, maybe a cone, cylinder, cube, a box trigger, a sphere trigger, basically anything. Okay, so uh, we are ending to the, you know, we are heading towards the end of the video. Now the last thing I really want to talk about here is the toolbar and this is also a really important part of the Unreal Engine interface. So the important parts to uh, see here are save current, modes, um, the settings, mega scans. Um, if you really use some you know, uh, level designing stuff, then you really need mega scans. It's a very good thing. Blueprints, cinematics, build and play. Uh, launch, I don't think many people really use launch. So yeah, you can press play to play new game. Move around, move jump. Yes. And for save current, you can save your current level, which is open. Now for source control, content marketplace, uh, all the other things which I have considered as uh, less important, we will talk about them because the content browser is right here. Marketplace is very important as well, but for here, like, being them here in, the, in this toolbar is not really important. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say in this video. Hope this video was really helpful to you guys. And in the next video, video we are going to talk a little bit about more about the basic things in Unreal Engine. 
and then we are going to actually look at uh, look about some of these types here or maybe something else who knows let's see time will tell us so if you like the video do leave a like subscribe to the channel as well and thanks for watching